buried back in these weeds. There's a 70 satellite. This thing hasn't moved since, it hasn't been on the road since the early 80s. The hardest part of this Pretty might intense. be getting the car out. Oh, is it moving? Yeah. It might be in gear. Uh, it, it might actually be in gear. Oh, that way, that way, that way. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> things we're good at, cars. Things we're not good at, trees. Trees. <laughs> Oh, there's the keys. Did you know you get a sirloin for three thirty nine? dollars Perfect. Nothing a little good, hard, honest labor can't fix, I guess. And before when we were jacking it up, it was trying to crease right in this area, but now it is all coming up. Oh, you gotta shoot an intro. <laughs> oh, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of the satellite revival. Today on Thunderhead 289, we're going to be pulling this satellite out of its grave, where it's been sitting since somewhere around 89, so like, you know, 30 to 40 years. sliding across that metal grate <laughs> but you moved four inches dang old TDI I don't have power man what do you know <laughs> what do you know should have had a Ford you get two vans it would totally you know it would do it okay so mine we can just loop around these corners. Yours would probably have to go around a frame horn. Oh God. Did That's, the tires turn? No. No. They didn't turn at all. Oh my gosh, it worked. What's under the car? Oh yeah, come check it out. A mouse? Hey, come there, yeah, quick. There's a moose. Oh, oh, oh everybody. He's got a whole house under there. It's the mouse house. Oh, you're gonna pick him up, eh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. Oh, it's a vole, actually. Oh, that's cool. Where? Oh, we're gonna be friends. I'm gonna grab my glove. Oh, quick. No. <laughs> you're quick, but you're not very smart. Take your bag. <laughs> he knows where all the holes are at. Yeah. He he's got the home field advantage here. He'll be back. There's the muffler, the exhaust. Wow. There's where the float was. Here, look at. Did you there's the center section of the roof. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. U joint. Oh, you can see the U joint. Check this out. The old title. The oh, binders? Oh. That's your title and oh sweet. This is the satellite emblem for that side. Oh, for the sports satellite. We really didn't even use a lot of effort. No, I, I felt like I did a wheelie, but my oh. van was like and then it moved. That worked good. We just rolled into it slow. That's how we should probably do it here to continue on. Kind of rolling into it, rolling into it. Nothing 
turned. Yes, just like we didn't want. <laughs> there it is. Now, let's see if we can make this thing run. That was pretty, uh, that was pretty scary. That was, that was something. Uh, we lived. Nothing broke. If one TBI isn't good enough, two of them. Thanks to the power of one normal engine. <laughs> Ramps. The satellite is in orbit. I'm hilarious. All right, push that one under. <laughs> All right, well, I can finally see under it. The floor pans are still there. How weird is that? <laughs> is that the gas tank? No, oh, this is the six inches of dirt. Oh, poke the gas tank. Oh, man. <laughs> now it's just straps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's bad. Oh, that's carpet right there. Oh, is that whole thing carpet? Well, oh, is that what not the thing? whole thing, but there's that's no floor little? pan left. You're a floor pan. Look at the dirt up in the rear U-joint. Oh yeah, it was like sunk above the rear end. This is insane. Like the gas tank was a mouse house. Just get this out of here. There we go. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> that night is. There we go. Exhaust is off. Yeah, I don't know why they always eat up the shackle. I mean, that's where all the salt goes. It makes sense, but yeah, they are pretty not there. Yeah. Like you hit a bump, and your car is going to be a low rider in the rear. Hey, look at there. That's encouraging. At least the trans, you know, has some resemblance of maybe being able to move, and the rear end probably moves. Probably if we can get the tires unseized. This is bad, dude. It ain't good. <laughs> Ooh. All right, well, it's time for day two of our satellite revival extravaganza. Last night we had a huge rainstorm here, like absolutely massive storm. I thought we were going to be washed away. I, I thought, thought we were going to die. Today everything's a little wet and it's exceedingly humid outside. Welcome to Iowa. It's also Louisiana. I'm glad it's here today and not in that mud hole. That would have been awful. So let's go ahead and get digging into this thing. What's our first step? Well, I think we can get the air cleaner off and then just vacuum off all the crap. And then from there, just try and get some plugs pulled and everything off and get some lube down the cylinders. And let's take it one step at a time. Sounds good. Let's begin. Ready? Up. And off. Light hood. It is. What do you think's under the filter lid? The carburetor. I hope. Oh! Oh, oh there it is. It has a huge mouse nest on the one side. It'll run. I kind of figured. Check that out. Worry not. I brought a vacuum. There you go. You can have that. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Throttle seized, isn't it? Oh, this thing seized solid, man. It's going to get a little interesting here if we can't make this one work, which it looks like it's pretty seized up. We'll see if we can free it up, but honestly, Wait, it looks you, pretty crusty. Did you bring that four to two barrel adapter? Or the I, two to four barrel? It's probably in there. I brought a whole bunch of stuff. Do you think so. we could <laughs> lift that thing? Well, I've always wanted to try that on something, and this might be the car. Although the bolt pattern's a little bit thinner on the Mopar than it is on like the Ford or the Chevrolet, so we'll just have to see if it'll work. But be a good opportunity to see if we can flip that thing over and you know try and put run a four barrel on a two barrel intake. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, we lock out the secondaries, but we'll try it both ways if we can make it work. This is going to be some science. <laughs> We're like excited for this. Boldly going where no one's gone before. Because there's a reason why no one would do this. <laughs> Makes no sense. So let's grab an extension cord, bring it over here, fire up the vacuum, clean this whole thing off. Yeah, I agree. Before we start pulling anything out of there. 
Don't want to drop any of that in the engine. You knew. Go for the beans. Go for it. Well, the good news is inside this valve cover looks really clean. So maybe our engine just happened to stay sealed enough that we're going to be okay. Yeah, I really hope our. Well, you saw it on your engine. You know the valve train gets all rusty. So I just hope that. I mean, the carburetor looks really clean inside. There's hope. You know. I think we can make it run. That's the sign of victory. How is there oil in that? Yeah, I, it kind of sits in the rocker cup and it never leaked back down. But if you look in there, it all looks pretty good. Dude, this thing's gonna run. It might. There's a chance. I'm a lot more hopeful than I was yesterday. This engine's blue, and that kind of almost looks like a small block Ford valve cover, so it'll run. <laughs> kind we of. We just pretend it's not a Mopar. <laughs> it might work. Well, it's not a it's not a slant six, so we're okay. Oh yeah, you're fine. Well, wait, hang on. What if it's two slant fours? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> ah. That's actually not as rusty as I thought it would be. I've seen worse. That's does the, right hold on, does the advanced mechanism work? Da -da 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 -da. Gonna move for me? Yeah. Oh hey, it did move. It probably works, kind of. Maybe. There's That's some enough. hope that it could work. We'll clean up those points. Oh my gosh, I think it actually might run. That's hilarious. This nifty breaker bar, look at this thing. It's an extension with a swivel, and you throw it in here, now it's a breaker bar. It's handy. Like, who thought of this? Crap. Oh my god, are you kidding? Look, look at this. One hand. Don't mind all the stuff in the threads, that's for me trying to blow it out, but as far as the internals go, I mean, there's a little bit of rust in this plug, but it's not bad. Yeah. I mean, it definitely had a tight spot in it, but there's hope. Which, for laying in a swamp over there, is not terrible. <clears throat> that one's a little rusty. That one's full of rust. <laughs> that's probably our... Our exhaust valve cylinder. Yeah, there's always going to be. Especially in this car. So, yeah, go ahead and explain this because we went over this in the F250 video, but a lot of people didn't understand how engines work apparently. So, we need to explain what happens when we mention or when we say the exhaust valve was open. So, basically, um, there's a certain firing order to all the cylinders, and your valves are opening and closing all the time on most all cylinders. and a lot of the times the ones that have the exhaust valves open, the exhaust in this case being really exposed to the wet and damp environment, that moisture was allowed to come back up through the exhaust and then um, rust up some of the cylinders here. So, um, and likewise, you know, if you get a lot of moisture on your intake, you can have it on your intake side. But it looks like definitely, it was probably the exhaust side that got this one. See, that one's clean. It's full of oil though. Which That's is good. good. Right. Yeah, we so. want we want an engine to be an oil burner if it's parked for a thousand years. Right. Yeah, you have a good opportunity. All the all the carbon and oil usually coats the cylinder up good and it's kind of a rust deterrent, so you know. That always kinda helps actually having a more worn out engine than one that was in good shape that ended up sitting. So we're gonna use a little bit of heat to try and get this one spark plug out. Seems like it's seized in there pretty good, so Put a little bit of heat on things, a little bit of expansion might break up that rust weld. Because if 
we were to round this off, it's pretty much game over. Yeah, that would be awful. Alright, go ahead. Yeah, we're good. Did really putting heat on it do that much? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Rotation nation. Alright, I can get it out by hand. Yay! That's awesome. Woohoo! I probably shouldn't touch this, should I? No, it's it's really hot. Oh. That will be our stuck cylinder. So now it's going to be amazing if it runs. Oh, this has been all over the board today. <laughs> yeah. Now it's an adventure. This has some hope. This is hopeful. Hopeful. We are full of hope. Hopeful at the moment. So literally you can't get to these and because you can't get to these, the last person didn't tighten them up very tight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's working out to be a benefit today. So these are always a pain. I always just opt to take them off. So we gotta get a hook and not too hard. Down they go. Now they're not stabbing you in the gut the whole time. They're all rusty. Well, those all came loose right away. That's good. That must be our bad cylinder, that one. If we can run it and get it up to temp, it might free up the ring. And it might not. I remember on the F-250, the day you went there, I was working on it. And it just started running better. And I was like, what the heck is that? And my Firebird did the same thing. It just started running better. And what it is, is the piston rings will be stuck. Not stuck in the sense that they're stuck in the cylinder, but they're compressed around the piston. And once those can snap out of that and make a seal, then, you know, it runs better. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of heat, expansion, they can let go. That one's not, not bad. bad. They all do have a little bit of rust on them, though. We don't want it to be too easy on us, you know. Fun it, with that. It scene. won't be. It's a Mopar. <laughs> we haven't had an easy Mopar yet. I've never delved into the world of Mopar, because here in Iowa, there really isn't any Mopars. This is, like, super rare for Iowa. It might not be rare in general, but mm -hmm. rare in Iowa. That one looks really good. Oh, that's our, that's our mint cylinder we're going to run on. This one. <laughs> yeah, so people tell you... Oh, there's got to be Mopars up in Iowa. There's not. I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. Iowa's car populace in the 60s, 70s, 80s was determined by the economy. The economy in Iowa was strictly farming. Everywhere around us is a cornfield right now, beyond those bushes. Yep. And if you're a farmer in the 80s, in the 70s, and the 60s, when money is rough, what do you drive for a vehicle? Probably something utilitarian. Because you don't have, you know, extra money for fun vehicles. So you drive a farm truck or a four-door Ford passenger car. Or a four-door Chevy passenger car. And if you go to junkyards here, that's all it is. Yep. If you go back behind sheds, that's all it is. Now you get down to this river town of Keokuk, apparently there's a few Mopars around here. And we found one because it's a river town. A lot of the industry around here was industrial and people didn't need a specific like a purpose-built car, they could have a fun car to drive around. So you find Mopars. Now, the bad side of that is we're in Iowa, and everything's rust, so you find half of a Mopar. <laughs> Case in point, the rusty satellite. The rattle <laughs> The rust heavy. It's not a rust light. <laughs> I think that's doing any favors. While Luke fights his favorite thing in the world, <laughs> I'm going to put some transmission fluid down each cylinder. We want to fill them up pretty good, right? Yeah, you know, it wouldn't hurt. Right, there's some for that one. I'm just going to give them the same amount and keep going around and around. This is going to help free up those rings. We'll just sit in here for a bit and I'll have some lubrication on the top end before it builds oil pressure, if it can build oil pressure, as we're cranking it for the first time in 35 years. Yeah. This is good and corroded on here, I'll tell you what. Get it? Yeah, finally. Yeah, it like rusted or just corroded itself on on that one wow. side. So the encouraging piece about this is that if you look at the underside of the carburetor, it's really not all that corroded or rusted up, so a lot of moisture didn't make its way inside the engine necessarily. I think what's holding us tight here is our, our linkages and our throttle shafts have at our ends corroded around the carburetor itself, 
So um, we'll see if we can get that freed up, but there's a good chance we're going to have to get a little creative with this uh, intake manifold because this is pretty, pretty messed up here and we'd really need to boil this and do some extra stuff to make it work. We'll see. All right, so there's a quart into the engine. That's going to sit in there while we do valve covers and all that other fun stuff. Give it the best chance we can. And then we'll tap the starter if the starter works and it'll go bleh. And there'll be oil everywhere. Triple homicide. I can't even, I can't even move the carburetor linkage with channel locks. It's that bad. It's bad. Look at that. This is bent the thing trying to, it's done. I'm just going to go with it's hopeless. Is ripperoni? Yeah. Toss it in the fire. Yeah. We're gonna have to get creative. Look at this. <laughs> the engine is the only part of this car that's going to be this easy to remove bolts off of. Yeah. The rest of the car, impossible. Don't you love these little clips like this? That just so the, much. They're just the greatest. <laughs> they are just a marvel of engineering. Like, what if we invented some kind of a band strap with a screw in it that would tighten as it, the screw was turned? I know, I'm just gonna... I can't even bust it. Yeah, you're right. That's that's ridiculous. Why Why would you do that? I don't know. Why would you even use those from the manufacturer? I don't know. It's too commonplace. That's too common, folk. We can't do that. There. Oh, well, I guess I wasn't on that tight. Dude, oh. well, wow. that's probably because it's mint underneath. Holy cow. Was this thing built? Look at it. There's not even like sludge build up in here. That's pretty good. Look at that. Nothing. You would think you just built this engine. I bet you the internals are good. It's just the cylinder walls in this case. So there's paint on the. What the hell? Mm, someone had it out or something before and reshot it. Maybe they did a valve job on it. Who knows? That's probably why the hood was off. It's been out before, I think. Hard to say. Oh, that's a collapsed lifter. Because it's so springy. Yeah, it sure is. It just needs pumped up. And it'll probably be fine. Yeah, well, give it the benefit of the doubt. It's been a long time. Those ones are good. That one's not. That one's not. That one is. That one is. That one is. We got that one. That one and that one. These two seem kind of seasy. Yeah. So, good thing we took that off. It looks like we got a couple stuck valves. Yeah, a lot of folks, when they find this stuff that's been sitting a long time, they'll just go and ram jam into it and try and fire it off. And what was probably potentially a good engine, they'll end up just destroying the thing. So, if you take your time here and go through it nice and slow, you know, you give it the best possible chance to succeed. And you know, with the original owner here, it'd just be really nice for him to see the thing run. And that's yeah. what we're going to try and do for him before he heads out. Had this turned over perfectly freely, we probably wouldn't have worried about the valve train, you think? Well, yeah, in, in most cases, if it doesn't have a tight spot, it's not super concerning. But if you feel the slightest tight spot when you're going through the thing, it's always good to stop and check because there's not supposed to be one. So if there is one, you know, then there'd be one. It is an anomaly that is not normal. So it's always nice to know at least what it is. Oh, oh hang on, hang on. Okay. Minimal dirt fell in. Wow, look at that. I don't know, it's pretty clean. That's incredible. Yeah, I don't know. I think someone, it's either was a crate engine, you know, like a warranty engine or something, because I don't think they, and Dylan, someone will probably chime in here that knows Mopars, but typically you don't see a bunch of engine paint on the valve train that's all that's all overspray from someone painting it up really quick. Look at this. Ooh, it was starting to get the yeah. rust. Eight more years, it would have been gone. Yeah. That's close. All right, usually I like to use a rubber mallet for this gently, but... We don't have one. Yeah, all we have is this brass mallet, so I'm just gonna be careful. Good. Good. Nope. Yep. 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 So that one and the one that's down. 
Which is odd that, oh yeah, look at it, it's stuffed down. Yep, sure is. That would stop us, I'm sure. So if you can see from that view, this one and this one are stuffed down, see how they're lower? So we're gonna fix it with a hammer. Yeah, look, it's still going. Hopefully it gets enough spring pressure. So we're back up. It is a coil bind. Hmm, interesting. All right, well, uh, rinse and repeat. Yeah, those are those are stuck. So we got four stuck valves. If we would have tried to have run it, it would have been curtains. Might be curtains anyway, but that would have been over that fast. Curtain? Yeah. Oh, like, like that's it. End of the show. Yeah. He's learning today. <laughs> it's my first day outside. I don't like what I'm doing, but we're getting a little running start with the piston. Oh, now it's getting easier. And we're able to push that valve back up. There it goes. I'm in the standing in the wrong spot. <laughs> we don't necessarily condone anything we're doing. <laughs> uh, Oh boy. Um, well, it's not up all the way, but it is up to where you, where you can spin the engine. Yeah. Well, do you want to just, we'll just have to work it back and forth until it. Yeah. This might take an hour, but we're going to play with this valve. We'll be back if we make any progress. Perfecting our method off camera. We got that one to free up. We're going to see if we can show you how we did it on this side. I just hit it with a hammer. Yeah. Wait. It started to work around and then freed up just fine. The encouraging part is those were two of the rustiest ones. They're not seized, right? Give them a good yeah. tap. Those yeah, ones are so good. that's good. That one is definitely... Wow. Those ones are stuck. Oh, well. Okay, stop. Before we get to coil bind. It's like a whirlwind of encouraging and then not encouraging. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no. Oh, hey, there it went. Want to hit it back down or... Yeah, it's going to... Hold on, let me get the piston out of the way. All right, give her a good one for All right. The positive side is when it comes up, it comes all the way up. So that other one is not that case. I can even, I can get that one up with my arms now. Go again. There it is. Yay! And it's fixed, just <laughs> like that. Just wait for that ting of all the crap and the guide to break loose valve was back to operating condition. That is probably the most shade tree th That is not the most shade tree thing we've ever done, but it's up there. You don't should, do this. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't roast us in the comments because we know how bad this is, okay? <laughs> Give us a break. We're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, stop. Let me just figure out where the piston is. And oh, that one's not so bad. It's getting easier. It's getting way easier. Give me that super satisfying ping. Good? Yep. Oh, hang on. Thinking about it. There it is. Fixed. <laughs> this this is so sketchy. <laughs> If this runs, it's going to be a miracle. Yeah, these if these valves aren't bent, this is going to be incredible. Hey, hey, to be fair, we didn't try and start it with them. So, yeah. and that isn't to say someone didn't do it years ago. So we only got one, one more. This is our problem child. Now we know the method now. It's getting there. It's way better than we started. All right, let her be. This is definitely ornery. I, don't, I bet you no one's ever done this level of stupidity. Who am I kidding? There's probably people that recommend this. Every 5,000 miles, hit your valve train with a hammer. <laughs> Mopar. Or no car. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Let's take it all the way to coil bind. That's good. Yep, it's getting easier. Dude, this is exciting. The engine, oh. Engine's pretty... Smooth going on. Oh yeah, though. it's it's just the valve train. It'll spin totally perfect. All right. It's still a son of a gun to get down. Believe. 
Come on. I know, it's it's pretty bad, but it is getting better. That's the exhaust valve, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's the intake valve. That's the exhaust. Well, derp, it's not this one. Math. Math. Math with eyes. It's geometry. <laughs> <laughs> is it bad that we're engineers? Poor yes. America. We're actually engineers. It's a true story. We both went to Iowa State for industrial technology. As they call it, but as the rest of the world calls it, applied engineering. We're applying our engineering with this hammer. <laughs> yeah, here, let me apply some engineering for you real quick. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, math. I think 20 more times we'll have it. Oh, oh, Ooh, come on. We want to try and pry it up. Yeah, we can try that again. This part really pains me. Uh, go up on the top coil. Hey! Oh, that worked. Ta-da! <laughs> we no. have valve train! No freaking way. son. <laughs> no freaking way. It just needed to come up higher the whole time. Uh, we just had to apply some engineering. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is put the rockers back on. Um, do a few rotations of the engine. Make sure the valve train is good to go. Make sure everything's returning to where it needs to be. And then we're gonna valve covers, hot wire it, see if it cranks. Out of everything we've done, the thing I'm doubting the least to work is the starter. Because yeah. that starter sat in the mud. That will be honestly more amazing than what we just did. Yeah. If, it's probably caked with mud and mouse house and everything else. If it does work, it'll be like It's gonna be unique, that's for sure. Question, isn't doubting the least meaning you have faith in it? Shit. All right, so we're tightening back down our valve train, and honestly, I've never done one of these before, so offhand, I'm not sure. I know on the Ford FE, it has kind of a sequence that you would do so that you don't bend anything, and keeping that in mind here with doing these, I'm just giving it about a turn or so, and then I'm just going out to the sides, and I'm just trying to bring it all down even, and basically what it's doing is it's pushing the push rod into the a little cup on the lifter and it's basically setting the lifter preload. And these are technically non-adjustable units so you torque them down and go. But the first thing you gotta do is get them all run down before you would try and torque them. So if you tried to torque one of these before it was all seated, you know, it would just be bad news. So we're just gonna take it nice and easy and we should be okay. All right, so we got our valve train all buttoned back up. Fingers crossed, no valves hang. Oh, this is a dumb place to stand. That one went down and came back up that was questionable. Dude, this thing turns over like butter. Like you would think you were driving this yesterday. Yeah, the bottom end seemed good. It was the valve train hanging us. That's exciting. There's hope. There is a sliver of hope again. This thing will run. So the starter is a whole thing in of itself. I think we're going to have to pull it off. There's a little inspection plate on the bell housing. So we'll get down there and see if we can get a look at what's going on with the clutch. The pedal went down. It didn't really return. I mean, I'm sure the snout of the trans where the throw bearing is all rusty and to heck. Yeah. So we can get down there and just kind of work it back and forth like we did the valves. You know, maybe there's a chance that we could even put it in a gear. That would be pretty exciting. Absolutely. All right. So that's our next step. Let's hop to her. Gone. I'm actually amazed these are even coming out because they're steel bolt into aluminum and dissimilar metals like to permanently bond forever. It looks pretty gross inside. I can see it from here. Yeah, it's a there's definitely a mouse nest inside of that. Oh, I wouldn't shift either if my link just looked like that. Ooh. I know, Everything's fine nothing. here. What was that? My socket. <laughs> Your Tang Tool socket? <laughs> oh, undercoating. Oh, paint! I mean, right next to the paint, I can put my finger through the floor. Exhibit A. Oh, boy. <laughs> Is it full? Oh, yeah. Starter's out. 
Oh man, look at that. That was a mouse nest. And a half. Oh, that brings back memories, don't it now? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep, I, yep. You know, I think we'll just leave that up. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> if you're going to park a manual car for a long period of time, it's actually always a good idea to push the clutch in and then put a board in there or something <laughs> so it keeps the clutch pedal pressed down or else you can have a whole host of weird things happen. Like this probably welded the uh, clutch disc to the pressure plate and the flywheel. Um, and some other fun stuff you can have happen if you sit a long time. Dang tools. So it was stuck pretty good, but using the old pry bar, it is turning. So that's Are you exciting. Me? No. Well, let me get a booster pack. Let's see if we can spin it. Yeah, it should be sitting right there. So there's the Bendix working. Do we need to have power to both? Like, I don't. I think so. I, don't, I actually don't hit it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have a break? I don't know, dude. Oh, oh. <laughs> you think we use that? Uh, well, it it moves. Yes. Yeah, now it, it definitely did not before. So I've seen better starters, but I've also seen worse starters. So we'll this, see. This one has a lot of heart, though. something to show you. Really? Oh yeah. We we think we do. We don't even know yet. Ready? Oh wait. Let don't, me don't stand anywhere on the side. Let's 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 walk over here. <laughs> I've I've made this mistake before and I think I've learned. Ready? Let's see if it cranks. <laughs> it just got faster. Did you hear that? And down. You see oil coming out anywhere? No. Should I keep going? <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I would I would just let it rotate a little bit more. I didn't watch all these valves. Yeah. It's got everything. All going up and down. God, that starter sounds horrendous. It does. So that was a huge milestone. So that's exciting. So for Unbelievable. The <laughs> <laughs> wow familiar sound. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's the motor. You haven't heard that in 35 years, Five right? Years, yeah. Wow. With that being said, that's the first time this is cranked for the first time in 35 years. We're going to cut this video here. Part three is going to be on my channel, Junkyard Digs. Make sure you subscribe here to Thunderhead 289 to see part four when that comes out and head over to my channel for part three. There'll be a link somewhere if Luke figures it out. Who knows? You know. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on Thunderhead 289. Thanks for watching, guys.